<laughs> but it didn't have one. So, and no one's watching. All right, here we go. Did we get to the fur trade? Is that right? Why did so many more immigrants go to the northern colonies than the southern colonies? Yeah. More industry, more possibilities. Yeah, more diversified economy. Yeah, very good. What was the basis of the southern economy? What kind of agriculture? Yeah. Yeah, plantation. What's the big, the biggest crop? Tobacco. Tobacco. And what was the other becoming more and more a big business in the South? Please. Yeah, humans. Yeah, it was big in the North too, but humans. And which side had more creditors? Okay, this is free banks in the colonies, but could loan money, North or South? Which section? And that's why even when there's not going to be as many slaves or enslaved people in the North, the creditors, and then soon the banks. They're going to accept slaves as collateral and loan money for slavery, loan money for plantations. And so they're going to be intertwined. Let's see, what else? Oh, what's economics again? Yeah. And so it could be nation, individuals, whatever it might be, scarce amount of product, whatever that product would be. What is it, the economic policy of Britain that was? Get as much gold as possible. Yeah. Mercantilism. Yeah, that's mercantilism. And oh, what were the laws that Britain passed and they couldn't enforce? Yeah. Navigation. Yeah, those are the navigation laws. So let's go and get uh, from there. We get did we get to the fur trade we talk about? Yeah. And what was happening? So first off, along the frontier, right along the ed this edge of the frontier, the tribes here were trading at first everything, but pretty soon. The colonies only what? Only want what thing for the tribe? Yeah, right uh, beaver fur. Yeah, fur. Waterproof. Yeah, waterproof. Nice hat. And that would be the style. You have made it. You have made it in London, let's say. If you have a beaver, beaver felt hat. Until the 1840s, it literally just switched overnight. So, fortunately for the beaver, there'd be none left and it would have kept going. And that beaver felt hat. Pretty soon, though, they only want that. What happened to the old skills of the tribes? No. Uh, I think there was like a lot of disease that kind of directly ended up stopped farming because of that. So they stopped farming anyway because of the disease, and then it became easier just to go beaver to get food. You forget all the ways to survive and have to rely upon somebody else for your survival. What's going to happen to you? <laughs> Is your what? No. And that's kind of what happened here. The frontier tribes became dependent. They became dependent upon the call. And we see this all over the frontier. Now, when the frontier gets a little bit more like up and down rivers, for example, Montana, the best, best case you can see it is in eastern Montana, the big fur trading forest like Fort Union, the same kind of thing was happening there. So, we just have some. The frontier tribes became dependent. And so they need to kill as many beaver as possible to survive. And what do they do? They kill all the beaver. They kill them all. And to think about it was, is once they kill them all and they're not farming it, to the colonial point of view, if you're not farming, you're wasting the land. To the English point of view. Remember, most of these Englishmen came over. Even if they wanted to get rich or they were going to be an indentured servant, they got that little piece of land. They want that little, little piece of land to farm it, to become independent, to get their rights as Englishmen, and if you're not farming it, you're wasting it. Now remember, generation before, two generations, the tribes were farming. So think about this all along the frontier. And so 1630s is happening right here, and yes, there were wars over this. And then the colonists saw the land, and they just simply took it, and just kept moving, kept pushing them back. We'll get to King Phil, I don't know why I put that picture there again. But, they move west, and that means more. So we talked about the Pohalans. Pohalans was a little bit different. That wasn't so much fur trade as it was just taking the land for tobacco cultivation. But the fur trade is going to be key. You see it similar here. And spread this way. But not near as many French Canadians. If you ever see the word Canadian, and you know how it's, it's the last three letters are I-A-N. For, a for the French, it was I-E-N. Canadian with an E at the end, and that meant a French colonist. 
And so, the British, once that happened, they used the land that opened the door for settlements. And I don't know why I talk war again, but more war. And settlers are going to come in and literally take the land and push the people who live there out by saying it's terra nullius. The land, they're not using it, they're wasting it. So this is kind of the mythical version of the settlers in American history. And it was very much presented, a lot of times still as, out of these incredibly brave frontiersmen taming the wild wilderness. But no, let's be clear. They were moving in and pushing the people who lived there out. But there weren't very many people left. That's what opened the door for them. But then again, the United States, you know, we, we are going to kind of hide that. But it was a brutal war, as this shows. A, that's basically um, settlers. You see the little cabin. Don't think of, a wood, think of a log cabin you might see today. They built it differently. Huge wood, square, kind of from the bottom up. It's just different. Though. But this is settlers. So the war we have to get to is 1676 King Philip's War. Same year as Bacon's Rebellion. So just imagine Massachusetts, <laughs> but also Rhode Island, Connecticut, are moving westward. And then this Connecticut River Valley and all the tributaries, great for people. They're moving into this area. And there's constant conflict. Conflict. The biggest tribe in that area, kind of the Hounds, they were kind of bullies with the Wapanoans. I am mispronouncing it. But that's the way I see it as an English speaker. So you got the phonetic, a little bit of phonetic. I'm sorry, the pronunciation. And then you kind of made it phonetics, kind of guess where the letters, letters were. They formed a confederacy of their, most of them were enemies. But basically, if we don't unify, we're doomed. Now, as I mentioned before, the tribes were very complex. Men and women both had authority. They were much more democratic and believing in this idea that we have individual freedom and therefore not going to take orders directly than Europeans have. But the Europeans dealt with a man. That's who they dealt with, the, the king or chief or whatever it might be. Dealt with a man. And so when they looked at this confederacy, the English colonists immediately gave it a person. Who is that person? Well, that, once again, this is phonetically spelled. Anybody want to pronounce that? Yeah. Huh? That's probably really close. I bet it probably is. Metacomet. I see it. I can't help it. I see metacomet. I can't help it. I see metacomet. Metacomet. But that's probably significantly closer. So the English, in their traditional English fashion, they heard that, and what did they call him? Philip. Oh. <laughs> because, because. You will find out that the English have butchered the language, all English speakers all over the world, and you'll see this on maps, and the legacy goes on and on. Or the Guangzhou in China, when I was a kid, it was, no, it was called Canton, because that's how the English pronounced it. Where did they get that? Because they're English. So, they did an attack. They attacked virtually every Massachusetts or Puritan village. So, there are 90 villages, 50 of them were, 52 were attacked, most destroyed. 10% of the population of Massachusetts were killed. In terms of percentages of population killed, this is the bloodiest war in American or what's going to become American history. Now, obviously, there's not that many people. And this is obviously a very stylized version, but they did ambush, surprise attacks, and their whole plan was not so much to kill the people there, but to terrify them, so they leave. And that's what they did. They all fled to Boston and towards the east. It was a great success. The Wapanoags won. So naturally, there was going to be kind of close to what we get a peace treaty, and the idea was they'll meet uh, near present-day Springfield, Massachusetts, and have a conference, basically, to say that the English colonies will be tied to the coast, and this will go to the Confederacy for all time. Just a nice little conference. No weapons, because this is peace. Now, English dealt with men, so most of the leading fighters from this Confederacy came, including Philip. And what happened? Now. 
Good guess, but not this time. They gave them wine and then had their militia hiding in the woods. They ambushed them and they were without weapons and they slaughtered them. And once again, another template for future wars. Dubai, Cocker, Cocker, surprise them. Yeah, they ambushed them, the English guy. Right? Victory, right? It blew up the Confederacy, and we will see this time after time after time. I like how they draw. This is a, a woodblock carving. Do they make a woodblock and then they use it to stamp paper in a printing press? So they make it seem like this organized line, like it's a fight. No, it was just a slaughter. And they ran down, they ran them all down. They killed that comet, you name it. The point we got to talk about Phil Keats Phillips War is to show that Confederacies could win. And we'll see it. The big ones in the history of the United States will be in present day Ohio and Indiana. But so you have versions of this all on the frontier of King Phillips, smaller versions, and to a lesser degree here. And just imagine what's happening. The tribes are being squeezed. And that squeezing of the tribes will fit in with a series of wars that it's going to be worldwide or empire. And the two main sides will be Britain and France, or their allies. And it will happen there in the colonies. It will happen along this frontier. Now, don't think of like a world war. This is not World War I or World War II, using the term for World War I, total war, where both sides are fighting long, protracted wars of attrition, a fight to the finish. These are relatively small fights for the most part, at least between these empires, win a few victory, and they quickly sign a treaty with the idea of being, okay, our side, we're not winning. Okay, you can keep a little bit of that empire. You scoop up some land in Europe or get a bigger piece of the colonies. So these are those type of wars. And in North America, it was all about the fur trade. And both sides trying to get relations with the American Indians to either trade and also kind of be proxies for their fighting. The French, only one-tenth the number of French came. Therefore, they had better relations. So all on this frontier. So the French have better relations, but there's a heck of a lot more British. And these will be all over the world. So we have India, the Philippines, South Africa, the Mediterranean, all across Europe, and of course, the Americas. There's a bunch of them, but the, the reason why the most important of these wars were for the American Revolution, what we call the French and Indian War, is because the colonists, to their point of view, were fighting the French and their American Indian allies. So, let's get to the war. There's a bunch of them, we're gonna really fast. King William's War is the first. So, King William's War. In the colonies, they named them, at least the first, most of them, after the whoever the monarch is. In Europe, yeah. All wars for empire. You don't, you do not need this one. The actual name, the war started in Europe as everyone's favorite Augsburg-related war, the War of the League of Augsburg. But you don't need that. That was fighting along the Rhine River between Louis XIV's France and the Netherlands, etc. The King of uh, Britain, King James II, had been ousted in what's called the Glorious Revolution. They had to find a Protestant relative of King James. James was certainly towards Catholicism. This is actually in the English Bill of Rights, which is, they don't have a constitution per se, but the monarch of England must be Protestant, period. The closest relative was James's sister, Mary, who married the King of the Netherlands, William. So the king of England was also the king of the Netherlands, William and Mary, that's King William's war. And the war actually had French raids into New England and the Middle Atlantic. Here's a picture of a French and a, uh, a Huron attack. No clear victor though. And when the treaty was actually signed, was the Treaty of Wiseway? It was status quo. You might have heard this term, status quo, meant it goes back to the way it was before the war. No clear victory. It was a slight victory for France and Europe, but no clear victory. So basically all went back to the old borders. 
This was pretty common. A status quo treaty. Status quo anti bellum. The way it was before the war. Next war, Queen Anne's War. <laughs> William and Mary didn't have an heir. They both died without an heir. So it went to Mary's sister, Anne. In Europe, this will be known as the War of the Spanish Secession. You do not need to know this. I just put it in. But Queen Anne's War. Once again, French raise them on the frontier. The British try to attack French positions, French colonies here. The war ended as a British victory. The British did really well in Europe, but in the colonies, status quo. Once again, status quo. Poor Anne. She didn't have any. She was pregnant 17 times. Most of them were still born. A few lived with one, one or two lived with one. Every one died. It's absolutely remarkable because one out of three one out of three pregnancies ended in the death of the mother. So somehow she survived. But she went through absolute hell and you know, destroyed. Her. And Queen Anne just, just couldn't function. It was, it's really one of these tragedies. You know, they just kept she she's have pregnancy, still born. She'd have to get pregnant right again because they did it in there. How she survived is just absolutely remarkable. You need a Protestant. The closest relative is Catholic, can't have Catholic. So where do you go? Well, there's a bunch of relatives that are Germans, so let's bring some Germans over. So the little kingdom of Hanover, because she didn't have an heir, the king of Hanover became the king of Britain. You might have heard of him, George. The first George, the second George, the third, who was king of the United States, was uh, declared independence, and they're Germans. In fact, King George I and King, king George II of Britain didn't speak English. They were Jews. Most of them just spent their time in Hanover. This is the trend that goes on to this day. After George IV died without an heir, they had to go find more monarchs, so they found more Germans. That's Colbert family. And that's the, the royal family today. The royal family of Britain are all Germans. And they look like horses because they're in the world. But that's another story for down the road. Well, I mean, don't marry your cousin. Moving on. Right. A Britain. Yeah. So why was King of both? And then they decided for obvious reasons that wasn't going to work. So it went to a brother, you know. And, he, and even though the Georges hated Britain at first, there was more money there. So they gave Hanover to another relative. Hanover is just part of Germany now. So the next war, everybody's favorite ear-related war, the War of Jenkins' Ear. Yes, that is a real war. When does this period end? Does it ever end? It wasn't 12. Oh, we got plenty of time. We get through this war. So. This was actually Britain versus Spain. France was on the periphery. Spain was a French ally at this time. And we have to go back in time. Eight years before the war began, Robert Jenkins was the captain of a British frigate. You might know what a frigate is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a fast moving sailing vessel. It's heavily armed. It's not like a battleship where they call ships of the line. And the Jen the Rebecca, it was a fast patrol ship. It patrolled the Caribbean because the Caribbean was plagued with pirates. So there's pirates all over. So it'd be one of those ships to try to capture pirates. By the way, what happens to pirates if they're captured? Probably executed, not always. But Jenkins and, and the Rebecca, a Royal Navy ship, did what a lot of Royal Navy ships did. A little freelance business, you know, enterprise. If they saw a single ship, let's say a Spanish galleon, a big kind of fat, slow-moving merchant ship. Going around. What did they do? They became pirates themselves. So this was really common. And that's what happened with the Rebecca. Jenkins saw a Spanish galleon near Cuba. Low, not very much wind, but frigates move a lot faster, with a lot thinner ships. Okay, the Union Jack, imagine that flag right there. Very close to that flag, slightly different but they would have it in a big, 
white field in the back. That Union Jack in the corner, but a massive flag. So once they saw that ship, they saw it with their lookouts, probably before the Spanish, before the Spanish ship did. They brought that flag down and put up what flag? The Spanish flag. We're friends. And then when they got close and that merchant ship could not escape, then what did they do? Brought down the Spanish flag and put up a flag. And they stopped the Spanish galleon. Little did they know that two Spanish frigates were right there behind them. They couldn't see it. So when they brought down their sails to stop that ship, Spanish Captain James, they roughed them up. They kidnapped a few of the crewmen. And then they decided, and Jenkins did the, no, no, we're trying to stop pirates. And so as a warning, they didn't kill them. What did they do? Cut off the ear. But that ear, over the next eight years, made it back to Parliament. Yeah, that's a plucky ear. That ear never gave up. That ear ended up in Parliament eight years later. They got a jug of rum, they dropped the ear in, and he saved his ear. And the ear made it to Parliament. And there were some issues with Spain, and a few very wily English politicians wanted war with Spain. So they said, look what they did to a captain of a Royal Navy vessel eight years earlier. And this is a picture of it. And it's kind of hard to see, but he's holding the ear. They got the ear and they brought it to the floor of Parliament and they voted to go to war with Spain. And they literally passed this ear around. Look at this ear, look what they did. Look what they did to our captain. Now look at this ear. Now just imagine, rum is about 25% alcohol. You drop an ear in it after eight years, what is that ear gonna look like? A gray, cauliflower looking thing but it'll add it'll stink so that helps right and they were passing this ear. i just i love the image look at this ear how dare they and so they went to war called the war of james i should add the ear is still there and everyone else where they bring it out to look no it's still at parliament and when i was the first time i went to parliament this must have been 2004 2005 I was waiting. You can go and go to the viewing area and watch it. It was, it was really cool. They had to wait in line forever. And I'm standing with my wife. We're standing there, kind of waiting in line. And they have a big deal, no pictures. And even though there are all these exhibits. And I'm standing there, and I'm just kind of, my feet hurt. I've been standing for a long time. And I just happened to look over, and there was a jar with a gray thing in it. It was Jenkins here. And this is still, you know, no one really had cell phones, you had camera. I started, you know, I, I did not have to, this digital camera was brand new, but they were horrible. I saw a film camera. I did one of these kind of look around, and I could kind of pull my camera out, you know, like this. I had it right about here, and there was a camera. And I, I go out there and just go, anyway, I'll just check as I film. Okay, I'm back. I'll see you tomorrow. So I didn't get a picture of the year. And then I went into change. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you for doing that. You did good work. Hopefully, practice won't be too bad. Yeah. I can still smell it inside, so even if you do suicide, it doesn't make sense. The thing was, it lasted a few minutes. That's what they blew the smoke out and blew it in. Yeah. Yeah, I thought anybody else to run or practice or outside today, I'm really sorry. This is not a good day for that. All right, clear out, people. You two never leave. You just don't want to leave. You spent all intervention here. Yep. You can't come here. Yeah. You're locked. I mean, trust me, if I didn't have to have you people. Uh, Let's do a quiz. I'm pretty sure a high school varsity team could beat the Bengals. In what sport? Uh, football. Like uh, this is an Hey. Perfect. Got a quiz today. Quiz day. Uh, yeah, yeah, you were gone. Yeah, we did notes. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to set up a video. I really thought I'd do it tomorrow, but the video's going to be up on it.
We're gonna we're gonna watch a video. Oh, yeah. I saw the I saw the video. Five seconds. Five seconds. Both. I put in the hard game. Third down. False start. We won't watch it. There's a whole series of rubbish. We watch. Yeah. There, there's um the first like five minutes will be for it. will be a year. I didn't actually get those works out. You can't make a quick quiz. Just to Thank you. 